Welcome to the Twice Over Movies podcast. If you're new here, check out our website at thetwiceover.com to get a better understanding of how we do our movie reviews. Our goal is to provide insight on elements of a movie which you consider more or less important so that our scores are never misleading. Remember to follow us at the Twice Over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and support us on Patreon. You've known me how long? Sure. 13 years. Battle of Poussin. Yes, sir. A man is faithful, loyal, efficient, all his life, all of it. And he is useful. And he expects, he has certain expectations in return. And then he fails once, only once. What does that make him? Does that make him a failure? When is a man done, sir, proving himself a good man, a decent man? Welcome, everyone, to the Twice Over Movies podcast. This is your host, Faraz. Is your co-host, Faran. Today, we're discussing The Shape of Water, a Guillermo del Toro film from 2017. It's probably best known to the general public as the movie where people have sex with fish. <laughs> At least that's how I heard about it, man. That's why it took me so long to watch it, which is pretty much for this episode right now. Yeah. I hadn't seen it before this. Yeah, I know. And that's not even to say, like, I'm a big Guillermo del Toro fan. I liked his Hellboys. I liked uh, Pan's Labyrinth is one of my favorite movies. I am not the biggest fan of fantasy, but some of his stuff, like, it's so immersive that I gave it a pass or I personally did enjoy it. But for some reason or another, like, I just didn't have the strongest... Uh, desire to watch this movie. Yeah, that, that I mean, uh, um, that's kind of the thing with Guillermo del Toro movies, uh, the ones that we know of at least, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, um, Shape of Water. He blends reality and uh, fantasy extraordinarily well. So it's always really interesting to see that. Um, I like. We can just go into our. Um, we can go into our scores here, if you want. We can. Let's just go into our scores. So we can start with the. Let's start with the writing. Okay. So this is an interesting category for this movie for the main reason being that the protagonist is a mute and signs everything. So you're reading a decent amount of subtitles, mm -hmm. and um, or you're hearing someone else translate for her. Yeah. So the way that I've defined the dialogue in this movie, I've included her facial expressions pretty much. That's that's her dialogue. I I would keep that under acting. Yeah, it's kind of a blend, right? Because she's mute, so that's the way that she is. You can, yeah, you can go both ways. I kind of included that a little bit, not really too much. It's more, I really more focused on like the actual substances. So what, what is, what are they saying versus how they're saying it for this category? Okay, so I mean, I'll tell you, my score is a solid seventy. I thought um, exactly what I went with. <laughs> okay, it, I mean, it was, it was a good. It was easy to follow along. It wasn't like super complex or complicated unnecessarily, which uh, a lot of movies can be. I just thought it, it did a fine job of telling the story. Yeah, I mean, it's not the strong point. Um, there's a couple of, there's maybe two notable quotes that I got throughout the movie. It's nothing spectacular. It's not the reason that you should watch this movie. True. So we're both at 70 for that. Yep. Let's talk about the acting next since uh, we, we mentioned that quite a bit. What did you sure. give it for acting? <sighs> this is a hard category because overall, this is when I went with overall acting on the movie, I went with an 80. Okay. Want to back that up with anything? Uh, well, um, the main character, her name is uh, Eliza in the movie. I, I don't know what her... Uh, Sally Hawkins, I think. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah. And uh, she's really the only performance that stands out to me. Everybody else is very subpar, <laughs> in my opinion. So <laughs> Really? Subpar? Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I mean, I guess for my standards, for the movies that we've been reviewing, you know, this is... Her performance is really the only good one, in, I, I believe, in this movie. So I'm up with an 80 because she is that good. Otherwise, the score would be much lower for me. So I thought the casting was actually pretty good for the movie and everyone felt pretty, uh, they felt right for their role. And I didn't think anyone threw me off. I, I wouldn't, for me, it was a little above subpar. I thought they were pretty decent. And I agree with you, Sally Hawkins was really good playing Eliza. 
So the score for me is 85. Yeah, so not too much different. Not too different, but I mean, I think 85 is a very strong score. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, all right, so let's go to the story and narrative. This is one of those things that uh, Guillermo del Toro is very, like it's like his forte, you could say. Uh, he tells a great story. It's a really simple story, um, but it's engaging. Does an incredible job of immersing the audience into the created world. And outside of a couple scenes that pick up pace, it's kind of a slow burn movie. So you kind of have to be ready for that. Really? With you that think said, so? I do. And I give it an 80 still. So I thought it was a pretty strong point of the movie. Yeah. I went with an 85. I think this is one of the two reasons that you, sh that, you know, you can watch the movie. There is, you know, you can break up narrative into a couple different things. There's an emotional narrative. And then there's the, I guess you could say like the objective narrative. This is just my own categories that I'm making here on the spot. Um, there's a lot of details that are really overlooked <laughs> and it's kind of disappointing, but he doesn't focus on little details. He, I think he knows that he's doing things that don't really make sense in the, you know, full context of things, full frame, but he does things that are better for an emotional narrative, better for an emotional impact. So I went with an 85. It is a good story. And it's a really meaningful one. It's a very poetic one. Mm -hmm. um, if if some of those details were not overlooked, this would be a really, really, really high score for me. It's one of my favorite stories. All right, let's talk about the aesthetics right now. Similar to the narrative, I think this is something Guillermo del Toro excels at. The world that he creates like has no detail left untouched. Um, I thought as far as the purpose of the aesthetics, the cinematography and the sounds and the music, it was 100% on point. Um, it was very consistent and created the mood it was trying to convey. This is the highest score I give any category, so I give it a 90. Interesting. So I didn't think that there was a lot that was spectacular here. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. And um, there is some stuff that we can talk about, you know, kind of later on. He, what they did do well, they did really well. Um, but overall, in terms of the you know, I guess you could say like the cinematography, the camera work. I mean, it was nothing really extraordinary, nothing special. I know a lot of people really loved it. I went with an 80. Yeah, it's still pretty strong. Yeah, and it's probably leaning a little bit more towards 75, I'll be honest with you now that I'm even talking about it. <laughs> so, so you're being a little friendly right now. Do you want to change it to 75? Yeah, I think I might just change it to 75. Um, all right, that kind of creates a gap between what we thought about this. That's interesting. I mean, you're saying that it was it looked good, but what did what is what was it missing for you to be like better? I guess just some other some of the other movies that we've um, you know that we've talked about together. Yeah. There was just a little bit more. I mean, so here's what they did really well. They did set design really well in this movie, but there mm -hmm. wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot of um, I guess skill or talent that I saw from the like perspective of the camera. Um, there was the scenes weren't I mean there were several takes within each scene it wasn't like they had to really mm -hmm. coordinate a lot I see what you're saying but the set design was beautiful the monster design or the well, I guess you could call them the creature or the asset design was really good and there's a you know the the color choices that they used throughout the movie were really really interesting like the the mood that it creates, like that very like green tinted right. old vibe. Obviously, this is taking place in the sixties. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of in between. I mean, it looks it depends on what you're sort of looking for. I I love seeing. I mean, I love seeing the other stuff with the camera work. Uh, let's let's move on to themes. Let me hear what you thought was so great about the themes. So I went with the ninety on themes. Um, okay. I do think that's one of the strong points of this movie. Guillermo del Toro does a really good job of tackling kind of broad political um political concepts not but not making them um you know overarching like they're very subtly subtly done without detracting from the main points of the film so he does that mm -hmm. in pan's labyrinth he does that really well in this movie as well so i went with the 90 and the main thing that he does create is um it's apparent and it's not in your face. I, I, I beg to defer on a lot of people on this, but it's not in your face. And I think he does a really, really, really good job. One of the big themes that I picked up from this was the theme of loneliness. And I thought that was the overarching theme like uh, that you mentioned the other stuff wasn't, but this one I thought was. And obviously we've discussed this before in other movies as well. You have the whole theme of um, an outsider or the other 
and that would refer to obviously the the creature in this movie um since this movie takes place in the cold war like other movies we've done such as uh dr strange love so like that's like the backdrop right mm -hmm. where these feelings of an outsider these sentiments were like super strong within american society um and then along with that you have like the sprinkle of other examples like the jim crow laws and the subjugation of like racism against black americans uh and then you also have a closeted gay man in Giles who, again, being a homosexual, he is discriminated against. So, I mean, all these themes like work with one another and the theme of loneliness is kind of like the overarching one over the smaller ones because it's this idea of being an outsider that can lead people to feeling alone. Mm -hmm. And um, with all of that said, I still didn't think it was that compelling or that great. I thought it was good. So I gave it a 75. Interesting. You and I are complete opposite on the aesthetics and on the themes of this movie. Here's the thing, though. Like, I do agree with you that this is kind of like what Guillermo del Toro wants us to get out of the movie. So, like, it's important to the movie. I think it's less about um, it's less about loneliness. I don't think it's about loneliness as much as it is about um, outsiders being people who are foreign, people who are misunderstood. Um, lonely, I wouldn't say that she's, you know, uh, that the main character is lonely. I, I don't know a lot of, but... Uh, I would disagree. She has some conversations where, not just her, but even uh, Giles, like, some of the stuff he says. But it's not, I but think I think it's less about... Clearly indicate they're like, they're, they can't, or they're just really tired of just being alone all the time. Well, I think it's less about them being alone and more about just other people not embracing them. Because they're, they're yeah. you know, they hang out with each other. She's got Zelda mm -hmm. when she goes into work. He has her. They watch movies together. They want and eat pie together. So I think it's less about... I think this is more for after the... This is more for the spoiler section. Thanks for listening to this production of The Twice Over. If you haven't already, subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcast. And remember to support us on Patreon or by sharing the podcast with a friend. Feel free to contact us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at The Twice Over or email us at comments at thetwiceover.com. All of the music you heard is from Amerigo Gasway. Check him out on Bandcamp and Spotify.